This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. So, you know, you come across as this really humble, down-to-earth, nice guy. I'm sure you were a good student at Kharagpur. But I'm sure there was another side to you as well. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, there is to every ITN. There is to every ITN. <laughs> did you ever bunk classes at ITN? Uh, the course. morning classes? Of, <laughs> of course. Uh, <yeah. laughs> I think I think it, I think it's a it's the rite of passage of going through college. Uh, you know, I had uh, you know, I, I have to say I worked hard, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but we did have a share of fun as well. Did you get ragged? Uh, you know, it was uh, it was pretty mellow. Uh, I definitely remember. You know, when I when I started, uh, you know, hopefully it has gotten better by now. Uh, but you know, we had. Uh, a few things. I don't know whether you still have, you know, at the time we used to have something called a CG change. I don't know whether you guys do or still do. Uh, it stands for center of gravity change. So, you know, you, as a freshman, you lock your room and you go out and you come back and the room doors aren't open, but everything inside your room has been rearranged. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> and they do it by putting sticks in and, you know, all your clothes, they rearrange even the furniture. So it's quite a shock when you open the when you open your room door and you walk back in to see your entire room has been uh, rearranged. So we that had... That must have been crazy. I mean, uh, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. As a freshman? Yeah, it was yeah. Uh, qu quite an experience. I don't think that was uh, as bad as, you know, maybe a couple of weeks into being here. You know, I, I came from South, uh, you know, I came from Chennai. I had learned Hindi in school, but I never spoke it much. Um, you know, just listening to how people were speaking, I just thought you address people this way. So one day there was someone in the mass and I had to call him. I called him Abe Saleh. <laughs> that, you know, that's, that's how, that's how that, you know, in my first couple of weeks, I thought you call people that way. It quite <laughs> 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 you know, and, and uh, next thing I know, the, uh, the, the folks in the mess were quite upset, and I think they temporarily closed down the mess. Oh, wow. So wow, I wasn't wow. very popular for, uh, for that day. So. so you were responsible for the mess shutting down right? Uh, just, just for a moment, yeah, just for a moment. <laughs> you met Anjali at IIT, Kharagpur? Yeah, Anjali is my wife. And Yay! Yeah, she, uh, she was my classmate. Uh, you know, she lived in... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you still have, uh, I, I hope you still have S&R. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was the only, uh, you know, uh, girls hostel then, and I hope there are a few more now. And, uh, you know, it wasn't always easy to, if you had to go get someone at the girls hostel, you had to walk, walk in the front and request someone there to go call them. And so they would go in and loudly say, you know, Anjali Sundar is here for you. So, <laughs> so it wasn't exactly a pleasant experience, but you know. It's, Does it still work like that? Or you guys use technology. Uh -huh. <laughs> I guess it's moved on by now. Yeah, yeah. So you know, when we were on campus, I mean, there was no Google and there was no internet. Mm -hmm. So how have things changed? You've come here after a long time. Do you see a difference between then and now? You know, of course, you know, I come to India uh, regularly and, uh, you know, the rate at Rajan spoke about it, uh, you know, the, the, the rate at which things are progressing, at least digitally, uh, has been phenomenal. And, and you see it, uh, you see it in every way. Um, you know, of course, we didn't have phones there. You know, I remember waiting for a long time to get the first rotary phone in our home, and it was a long wait to get that. Uh, you know, didn't have access to computers growing up, uh, yeah. you know saw the first computer here for a little bit. So we bit. had to book time at the computer center. Book time, carry floppy yeah, disks. Yeah. And, and floppy uh, disks, yeah. It's a very different world. So, you know, the, clearly the progress has been phenomenal. Mobile is an amazing revolution for India. You know, you have over 300 million smartphones. So you see the change, you know, palpably, you know, across everything, uh, everything I interact with. 
Though I have to say, walking into Nehru Hall, you know, looking at my dorm, it still looks exactly the same <laughs> as it did 25 years ago. So, so some things don't change, which is for the good, I guess. Uh, you were in Bangalore. Uh, you met startups in Bangalore. And uh, I heard you say that uh, there's nothing really missing as far as startups in India go. They're as good as startups elsewhere in the world. But there's one thing which sort of, uh, you know, we also invest in startups and we face this problem as well ourselves as a company, that the Indian market is not large enough to invest a lot in technology. So, you know, so how do you, in a situation like this, compete with MNCs, which have large investments in technology? No, I think it's a good question. Uh, I think part of the problem is, uh, in India, you know, the, the potential is there and the market is developing. I think it'll take a few more years for it to fully realize the potential. You know, for all its potential, we get excited about smartphones, but we are talking a, a number of 300 million in a country of 1.3 billion people. Yeah. And, and, and not all of them have good connectivity as well. So I think the market, the digital market is still developing. And so that's the problem you run into. And yeah. so as companies getting built here, it's difficult to scale across India and reach that full potential, which gives you the resources to go compete internationally. But I think it's just a moment in time. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, hopefully Indian companies are more thoughtful about, you know, when they build stuff, also targeting similar areas like Vietnam and Indonesia and Thailand. I think those markets are developed and, you know, and the same products would, would work in those markets as well. So I think they need to set their sights a bit bigger. Uh, but it's a good question. Uh, but I think the trend lines are strongly in the favor. I think every year I can see the, uh, the rate yeah. at which things are changing. Yeah. So in about three to four years, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, I'm pretty convinced at least in a five to ten year time frame that there will be big global uh, you know, software companies coming out of India and we will be very used to it. You know, look, it's remarkable to be at uh, IIT. Uh, there are many, many great people who don't make it in, and you will see this later in life. People do well from all walks of life. Uh, I think it's important to remember, uh, you know, uh, getting into an elite institution doesn't guarantee success. Mm -hmm. uh, it matters a lot, but it doesn't guarantee success. And, uh, you know, I think, I think that's, it's important to keep that perspective in life. And, uh, you know, uh, life is a long road. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so you want to you wanna take it at the right pace, and enjoy what you're doing. You know, I just met a, I interviewed a guy recently for our company, and he was all of 26, 27 years old, and he had done a startup after graduating, and uh, he was very excited, and he wanted to do new, new things, so I asked him, what happened? I mean, why did you give up on the startup? You've already done one or two things, and you want to try a third thing. He said, I saw these friends of mine who graduated with me, they're doing such exciting stuff overseas and in India, that I went through a quarter-life crisis. <laughs> And so I want to do new things. There's so much happening outside. There's so much opportunity today that there is no end to what you can do. Yeah, no, yeah. I think it's great. I think yeah. there are definitely a lot more options. I mean, it doesn't need to be even in engineering. I, th I, th I think it's important to remember uh, there are many, many different ways uh, you, know, you can approach things. And what matters most is you know, loving what you're doing and, uh, and trying to do well at it. So. Sure. So tell me, uh, I'm sure there are lots of great technologies at Google, and you, you're a great technologist yourself. But what is Sundar Pichai like as a leader? You know, I think... What uh, is your leadership style? You know, when you're, when you're trying to run something uh, at the scale of Google, uh, you know, we have now over 60,000 people, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I, I, you rely on other strong leaders. I think, you know, a lot of what I do is, you know, I have an outstanding leadership team. You know, it's learning to let go and really empowering people. Uh, you know, at all levels of the organization, and, you know, trusting them to do, doing the right thing. And as a leader, a lot of your job is to make those people successful. Uh, it's le less, less about trying to be successful and more about making sure you have good people, and your, your work is to remove ba barriers, remove roadblocks for them, uh, so that they can be successful in what they do. And so that's how I've always thought about it. And I've also valued, uh, you know, teamwork quite a bit. And you know, I think it's really important uh, to build organ organizations where people actually want to work together. Yeah. Uh, you know, everything comes out of that. So setting up collaborative uh, cultures is another big, big thing I try to focus on. So it's not about one person, it's about the team. That's right. Yeah. And if your team succeeds, you also succeed with them. Absolutely. Okay.